eat certain ripe fruits, gorillas have smaller group size than where they are purely folivorous. Although a troop of gorillas may have a large range overall, they are not quick movers. Gorillas are so large that they need time to forage for leaves and to digest this leafy diet. So they cannot move very far each day. In fact, because their leafy food supply is so abundant in the tropical forest, they do not even need to move very far each day just to find things to eat. Zoologists have found that gorillas only move about one quarter to one half mile per day. If a five square mile area were a gorilla territory, the group would need to move around the circumference of eight miles to patrol and defend the area on a daily basis. Since gorillas move too slowly to do this, and there is abundant food, there is no territorial defense. Males do defend their groups of females, however, and there is lots of overlap across the home ranges of neighbor, neighboring groups, so standoffs between rival males sometimes occur. And when I say standoff, I mean that quite literally. After engaging in threat displays, pounding their chests, hooting and roaring, their conflicts tend to end in staring contests. The first one to break eye contact slinks away. When you think about the amount of damage these huge, strong creatures could do to each other, this peaceful resolution is pretty amazing. Although gorillas move slowly, and we would think they would simply be feeding in a very small area, they never remain long enough in a single site to consume all of the vegetation. Almost like humans who use rotational grazing with our domestic cattle, the gorillas feed in morning and afternoon, then rest through midday, removing just enough leafy forage to thrive and leaving enough to allow rapid regrowth in the hot and humid jungle. Gorillas make leafy nests to keep them off the cold ground or secure in the branches of a tree as they sleep overnight. It's clear that gorillas, like chimps and humans, have high cognitive capacity that lets them solve complex problems like where and how to feed and to sleep comfortably. Primates continue to be some of the most endangered animals on our planet. This amazing and diverse group of close relatives has been assessed by almost 100 field scientists with intimate first-hand knowledge of their study animals. They found that primates around the world are threatened by local hunters who value bushmeat, by habitat loss due mostly to destruction of tropical forest as logging roads make access easier, and by the remaining illegal wildlife trade. The list of the most critically endangered species includes the incredible eastern lowland gorilla and the amazing golden lion tamarins. Golden lion tamarins are making a comeback in Brazil, but gorillas have declined in some African countries by 50% in just 20 years. The future of these endangered species depends on the cultural and biological importance of these animals as recognized by their range countries and the efforts by governments and individuals to improve protections for the species. Failure to recognize biological importance and to provide conservation protections will surely result in extinction of lion tamarins, gorillas, and other endangered taxa and species by the end of the next century. Have you made the connection between all the problems faced by our closest relatives today? Here's an example to serve as a hint. Three quarters of Brazil's total population lives in the Atlantic forest habitat. Forest decline, overhunting for pets or trophies, and other habitat degradation all happens for a reason that relates to the impacts of our human population. The same example can be used in other regions of the world, in this, the Anthropocene era. I hope you'll start having serious conversations about this issue and consider how your own actions as a consumer, a tourist, or any other way may affect primate populations.